What's up, guys? My name is Marco. I'm a grateful citizen of the United States of America, and Donald Trump's my president. Yeah! This is my gancho al hígado. A hit to the liver. A hit to the liver alls. Get it? Aurelio Matucci, what's up, my friend? Everybody say hi to Aurelio Matucci. He is an... Um, where are you at, Matushi? Um, Palo Verde. Um, he's down in LA, but I, I just I can't remember exactly where he's at. Um, he's District um, 43. He's friends with, um, what's his name, with Omar Navarro. So, I'm going live with uh, Melinda. Melinda's doing great work in um, Texas, and she's also, well, she lives in Texas now. She's originally from um, New Mexico, and she's going back to her hometown to do great work for New Mexico, uh, doing Hispanic outreach. And uh, I wanna talk to her so she can Bring us up to date with all the hard work she's been doing. And uh, hi, <laughs> hey Melinda, how are you? Can you see okay? I can see. Wow, you got a you got three flags there. I've got three flags. I've got um here. I'll give you a little tour. So <clears throat> that beautiful amendment, of course, the Latinos for Trump 2020 is right in the middle. Awesome. <clears throat> yes, and we and we have actually got more in our in our garage, but for now, this is you know this is this is what I have for my podcast room. So I'll be doing my podcast room. <laughs> so Melinda, so are you are you an immigrant? Are you originally were you born in the United States or I was I was born in southern okay. New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So uh, your parents were immigrants. My so my grandmother, my grandmother was born in Monterrey, Mexico. <clears throat> okay. And I have yet to go visit the beautiful Monterrey. Yeah, I just haven't had the opportunity. So my grandmother was born in Monterrey, Mexico. Um, my great grandfather and great grandmother. So my grandfather, my great grandfather was working for the railroads at the time, and he had an opportunity to bring his family and come to America, and come to America to work for the railroads. So that's how my family migrated from Mexico into New Mexico. So he got a job in New Mexico. My, my, so my grandmother was three months old when they brought her over. She's one of eight. And um, they all became legalized Americans. And then, of course, you know, that made my mother an American, which made me an American. So I'm a proud, proud American um, from New Mexico, but it's much more... Um, pride from you know my family coming from from Mexico. I mean, they, we're all, we're all immigrants, right? But I see that you have kept your. I mean, you speak a little bit of Spanish, right? You. you... Poquito. Poquito. <laughs> <laughs> I speak. Oh. What I said before we. I speak Spanglish. I tell people I'm so American that I speak Spanglish. I mean, you know, I, my mom. My mom's fluent. All my aunts and uncles. Everybody's fluent. We just we just weren't raised in fluent Spanish growing up, and I'll tell you why. So my stepdad, who raised me, um, the only dad that I know, who's raised me since one years old, is from, he's Kashmir. So, you know, the family came, his family from Pakistan, he, he moved, uh, was Kashmir. And so, you know, of course, in growing up in, in our home, we spoke English. But I see you have kept the traditions. I mean, sometimes I see the food that you post Yes. Uh, and then New Mexico is still, I mean, it's, why did they call it New Mexico? Just to, because he was kind of like Mexico or, you know, you know it's story, history behind that? Right. So the, the, in the history of New Mexico, I mean, it's the founded land, you know, and it's so, and as a matter of fact, I should have brought my book up. My grandfather's cousin wrote a huge book of the founders of the family in Lincoln County, New Mexico. And these were the first settlers that came in from different areas, right? Of um, into New Mexico to claim the land that then became America. 
And so Lincoln County is, if everybody I'm sure knows from that area, is all like the Redoso area, um, Alamogordo, but all that Lincoln County. So all, when the settlers came in 1800s, I was able to track my family um, back to the early 1800s from that book. I mean, this book is like this huge. And the Sanchez family, uh, my, my grandfather's uh, cousin wrote it. So, you know, it, it just be, became the part of, of, New of New Mexico, but all the settlers came from Mexico. They came from different areas um, of New Mexico into into the, the southern part. And so, you, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful it's New Mexico. There is a senator from New Mexico, uh, Octaviano Larrazola. The first Republican the senator from the yes. 1800s. He wasn't very well liked. <laughs> he wasn't very very well liked by both sides. I know. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm reading about him because I think I can bring a little bit of his philosophy forward and, and try to work from there because he had to go through some issues like we are going through right now, mm -hmm. and especially the newcomers from Mexico that I that's mainly my audience is to the to the recently uh, naturalized citizen and, and, and you know to the people that came in the eighties during the Reagan administration because I can't find them out there and they should be jumping up and down to help the Republican Party. Exactly. A... No, and you know what and what we're and what we're learning because Michael, I'm sure you know we we all grew up. If you're a minority, you will just have to vote for a Democrat, right? automatically the Democrats are for the poor, the Democrats are for the minorities. They're there to help the Republicans only care about the rich people. Um, but what more Hispanics are starting to find out is that our, um, what we care about, right? Our morals, our values, we're conservative. And the more the people that more Hispanics are starting to understand that, the more they're starting to to learn and to search and to understand, you know, that the, the democratic values don't really fit our values, right? Yeah, we're not comparable. And, and it, maybe we were at one point, maybe the Democrats of the 60s, yes. but the Democrats are just going so far to the left that it's just our families are being we're really being separated because of their liberal policies. Oh, you're absolutely right. I I was telling my husband the other, you know, a few weeks ago. It's really sad. I mean, we need we need the democracy. We need the Democrats. We need that balance, right? I mean, it's very important because we all have different perspectives of any issue. We could take one issue, and you could put ten different people in the room on one issue, and they're all going to have a different perspective on that issue. So to get the best of the balance and the best of everything, we need to have, you know, our Democratic Party to be, I mean, I'm going to say this, to be sane, <laughs> to be logical. And, and, again. And, and you know what? And the problem is that it's, it's becoming unhealthy, especially in the Hispanic community. And I can attest to that. When I went to the, an election night, I was fortunate enough to be in the headquarters of Univision. And I did tell him this. I told him, guys, something is wrong when 90% of the people are going one direction and only 10% are on the other side. It's not right. healthy. Our communities are in danger. You can take advantage of, of the community so easily. Oh, absolutely. Maybe a 60-40. <laughs> Maybe a 60-40, but it, it, it's so bad in the Hispanic community. No, and it, you're right, and it's becoming, um, it's, it's really sad, but if, if you if you notice that the only times in this current, you know, political world, I mean, we've always, I've, I've always not been really cared for the hypocrisy of, of uh, politics. I'm not a big fan of it, and I'm sure many people aren't. I mean, we can look back today on videos from a couple of decades ago, three decades ago, and the politicians, that, especially the Democrats, Hey, even some of the Republicans, they flip flop twenty four seven. They 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 don't stay consistent. It's like what they what they hate now. Uh, what Trump is doing, they were doing back in the day. Um, the immigration laws. They said, you know, absolutely, we need we need to protect our borders. You know, nobody can come in illegally. 
Um, you're going to be shipped back. Don't make that Obama. Don't make that trip with your children because you're not going to come into our country. You're going to be shipped right back. You cannot come in illegally, but reverse the roles. And now that it's coming out just because it's coming out of Trump's mouth. Oh, it's, it's just this drama. It's, 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 oh my God, the most horrible human being on earth because he's doing the exact same thing, saying the exact same things that every politician on both sides of the aisles said before him. And so for me, and I know many other people that I speak to, that is starting to wake us up, right? That is starting to open our eyes, like what in the world is going on here? Why is, you know, it, was it okay? That, why is it okay for them to say it? But it's not okay for Trump to say it. So people are starting to gravitate and become a little bit more um, <clears throat> curious. I'm going to say the word curious or, you know, and another thing, people have to have an open mind. You have to be able to have an open mind to take in the information. I deal with some people that just emotional are just so emotionally driven by the hatred of our president that they cannot. I mean, it, that, that glaze over their eyes is just so thick that they cannot see the good that is actually happening in this country. Because they're so driven by that emotional hate that you could put them, that, you know, they're so pessimistic that they just cannot fathom that anything, anything can be positive or be good. And again, it's all going to be a perspective. If you already have this hate for hatred for somebody, everything he does is going to be negative. Everything is going to be this horrific, dramatic scene. It's not going to have... But we all have to realize that every situation can have a positive and it can have a negative. And if you're not open to that, and if you're not open-minded to that, you're not going to see it. But starting to see a lot of other people who are open-minded and can say, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing more money in, in, in my paycheck. You know, <laughs> something's got to be yeah. happening. Um, unemployment for minorities is at a history record low. It, that's got to count, and they, and they can't say, "Oh, that's from Obama," right? That's long well, they're, they're gone. They're saying it. They, <laughs> they can't say it. say it anymore because then Obama but, told us our jobs are coming back. M Melinda, so are you a, a Trump supporter from the get go, or do you have a walkaway story, or how did you end up on? The, what's your passion? What 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 drives you? So yes, whenever Trump came down that escalator and he said he was running for president. I said, ah, I'm going to vote for Trump. And, and the only reason right from that moment that I found out that he was running is because I said, he is a businessman. Our country is on a huge decline. Economically, it's kind of, you know, up and down with our past presidents. I said, what an awesome thing to have. So, I, I, I mean, he's, he's a boss. He, around the world, he's well known. He's he's built a business. He's a boss man, and what a lot of it's it, a lot of people don't understand is that the president's term is like a, it's the CEO, the CEO of the country, right? The chief executive officer of the country. That's all that Trump is. So I I watched him. I like his you know no nonsense kind of attitude. I said, I am so tired of the empty promises and. And just, you know, everything that Trump had to say, I said, you know what? I'm going to vote for him. Then after that, that is when all of the chaos started to happen, right? Right after that, chaos. Right. So, you know, when he said, we need to build the <clears throat> wall, that wall is going to be, you know, we're going to build a wall. The other people were like, oh, fans, you know, we're going to, same old rhetoric, but president, whether a Republican or Democrat. So, From the get-go, I said, we need a businessman, a businessman to run this country. That is what we need. Somebody who knows how to, you know, take charge, knows how to um, execute people doing, you know, I mean, worldwide, right? He's already got connections. He, he knows people already worldwide. So I said, right then and there. And from the beginning, when I started watching the Democrats attack him and attack him, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's when my eyes opened even more. I'm like, this is like senseless stuff. So I started their their um, their rhetoric, their narrative just didn't fit. It just didn't make sense, right? It just never never did from that from that point. And 
that made me want to to run away from them even further. And so, yes, I did have a walkaway story. And um, that walkaway story, I was really there. That group is awesome. Um, if you're on the fence and, you know, if, if you're not happy with what's happening in the Democratic Party, that is they're an amazing group to be a part of. So I did. I, I did a walk. You know, let, let me tell you a little bit. Uh, I actually, well, I, I met him in Sacramento. Mm, Brandon. And then, uh, uh, Brandon. And then I saw his team in Miami and I met his assistant. And she is great. And, she, oh, and I don't think I have posted on the group, but they're going to do a big event in New York and they want our help. So I'm going to be posting their flyer and we need to go with everything. They're, gonna, they're having two events. And they're catering to the to this Hispanic because they're doing the event uh, at the uh, district where um, Alexandria Cortez is the representative for, and so uh, they need all the help they can get from from you and me and people absolutely. like you and me, you know, that absolutely. understand what's up. Absolutely, and so I'm 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 a, so happy to be a part of that, and I will support fully. But you know, um, more and more, especially the, with the Hispanics, we are, are, you know, faith is huge for us. Family is huge for us and our freedom. You know, those are the, a, a bunch, those are some of the core uh, values of the Republican Party. And more and more people are starting to open their eyes to that. And the Hispanic values, not to say just, you know, not, not I, mean, I'm, I know a lot of people have those values, but with the Hispanic, and and the Latinos that those are really huge for us, you know, very huge values for us. So those are some of the topics that I'm going to be um, speaking on more, and and so more people can understand how the values of the Republican Party really match our conservative values as Hispanics. Now, before before you go there, let me let me ask you something. So you have a big follow. I was I was looking at you. I couldn't even. Uh, I was gonna friend my you through my wife's account, but you already have over five thousand friend five thousand friends, <laughs> because our pages are being uh, restricted right now. So I can't go live on our page. Um, and besides, you know, besides you being a beautiful Latina, I'm sure that helps that helps a lot. But also, you're 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 a real grassroots. A, a movement and, and yes. people gravitate towards that and, and that's why I when I saw your walk away story I said man I need to meet this person and I need to talk to her because for me as a newcomer I became a US citizen in 2003 most of the opposition that I have is from the Chicano movement and I'm, mm. I'm still I'm trying to understand and, and I need to talk to people like you that were here before me and, and see how we can deal with these people, how we can break through and tell them, look, the white man with blue eyes is not our enemy. Stop no. telling us that. <laughs> They're not. They are not our enemy. And, you know, to add to that, like the walkaway star being from southern New Mexico, and what I share is that southern New Mexico is predominantly already red, okay? I think for besides Las Cruces. And it's more the northern part, um, like uh, Bernalillo County and the north, Albuquerque, Taos, Santa Fe. Those areas are more blue. As a matter of fact, Trump lost, but they make up 51% of our votes. So us, uh, the smaller communities in the southern part of New Mexico, more rural, it's like we don't have a loud enough voice because, you know, Bernalillo counts for 51% of our votes. And that's why... Um, and it's more liberal, and that's why Trump lost. It wasn't by a huge, it wasn't a huge margin, but, you know, he still lost. I believe, though, now, I believe, and I'm working hard, and um, I made that page, let's turn New Mexico red, that it can actually turn red, because now more and more people are starting to see that he is, he cares about the real issues, the, the immigration issues. Uh, the, a, a lot of us from the southern border have felt the uh, decline in our communities and our families and our friends through the open borders because of the meth, of the heroin, um, of the gangs. Um, you know, it has really affected us more than what anybody can understand. And so I, you know, it, you look at, like I said, you look at the Southern part of New Mexico and it, it is red. 
And the reason why I am such a huge advocate because I, I see it in my own family, it is heartbreaking. A lot of my friends have family members that are either lost, um, you know, in, in the meth. I mean, it has really consumed our communities and um, the gangs, the cartels have been able to. And Trump Trump wasn't lying when he said, you know, they, they told me, oh, my gosh, Melinda, did you did you hear what Trump said? He said Mexicans that all Mexicans um, are gang members. All Great Mexicans Trump. are rapists. They're all drug dealers. And I was like, what? Do you, why would he say that? Right. So I listened. I listened. And what I heard him say was, and, and, and I encourage everybody, go back and listen to his speech when in 2016. Go back and listen in terms of when he said he was running for president. Listen to it again. Listen to it as many times as you need to. Not once did I hear our president say, all Mexicans are drug dealers. They're horrible people. They all. If you're a Mexican, just go back to your country. What I heard was Mexico allows the drug dealers, the rapists, the gang members to just come right through our country, right? Just to walk right in. Well, that's not racist. Those are all facts. We've lived it. We've watched it. We've seen it. Um, we, we, we've watched how it's affected our community. So you can't be a racist by speaking the facts. And as a matter of fact, let me just say this. Everybody before him, all the other presidents, they said the same things. Okay? They just never did anything about it. They promised because they wanted the votes. They wanted the votes. Oh, vote for me. We're going to protect you. We're going to, you know, this and that. They never provided anything. Now we have a president that is providing. So that's opening people's minds and eyes up as, as well. You know what I have noticed? What I have noticed too, like even from, because I was born and raised in Mexico, we're so, there's a lot of hypocrisy and, and we're double standard because if, if, if a Mexican or, or Mexican descent guy wins the Nobel Prize or we're always trying to say, oh, but he was Mexican, you know, that's, <laughs> but when, when a Mexican guy commits a crime, oh no, it, you know, we, we don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. we need to take responsibility as a community, our own issues, and, and try to deal with them. And I, if not, Trump was trying to bring awareness to a, a, a health issue that we have, which is drugs. I've been clean and sober for, for 12 years. I knock on, on wood here. And, and I know exactly what he was talking when he was talking mm -hmm. about drugs. Drugs have taken over our our communities. Our the youth. fentanyl. It's very, very addictive. Very addictive. And, and we need to fight. And the only way to fight is by people like you and me bringing this subject uh, and, and saying, yeah, well, thank you, President. Thank you for bringing the issue up. Now we'll take it from here. And let's right. do something about it. Oh, no, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, we we are more and more are really starting to open up that. Um, and again, in the media and how he's being portrayed, um, how his words are being spun from the very beginning, from the very beginning um, that he announced his candidacy when they said that he said all Mexicans were drug, were drug dealers. Um, <clears throat> you know, they, it has it has been a, it has been such a lie since day one and it's we're watching it just get so bad and it, it frustrates me beyond belief how i mean just the control that our government has had on us and another thing that people don't understand is that i've met i mean hundreds of people in my life that have said i am so sick of our government they're corrupt they use their powers against us they're corrupt, they're corrupt, they're corrupt, right? We we finally have a president that's in the house that's saying, you are so right. The government is so corrupt and I'm here. And he's leading the way and showing us just how corrupt they've been. I mean, it, people didn't even know that it is not his, at his inauguration. If they're not paying attention, they're not going to know this. He turned and he looked at every past president sitting behind him. And he, and he told them, it is time to give the government back to the rightful owners, right? Mm -hmm. Give it, Put it back in the hands of the rightful owners. And that is to the citizens of this country. 
They have been far abused. They have been, you've abused your power against the people. You have, you know, they've, they've become beyond rich. They're living out there, living the lavish lifestyles while we were watching our country do this. And a lot of millennials, they can't look back and see this. You know, I, I'm, you know, about five grandbabies. They cannot, they can't, they've not lived long enough to be able to see how bad our country has really declined. And now we're doing this. Right. And, and I, was talking, I was talking with somebody yesterday about that, you know, how in my country, in Mexico, <clears throat> the, El Pri, the, the political party, El Pri, they were able to stay in power for 80 years and they would just reelect and reelect their own presidents. We we're starting to have that problem here in America where you have Nancy Pelosi, you have Maxine Waters, mm -hmm. you have uh, Biden, you have all these people, and their kids are doing all the are, are doing, you know they're like a mafia family now, and, and we need to have term limits and clean and and have the spirit of rotation, no more than two terms, and you should just no. and you're in California on. and you're in California and you and I you know I feel. I've got family and friends in California, and I know that, that you guys are really, my husband and I left, we were living in Connecticut out by New York, and we now live in Texas. And, you know, how, um,